Hi, it's Anthony Samroff, International Life Coach from BeYourselfAndLoveIt.com. I have been running a series of interviews, um, of workshops rather, here in Glasgow in Scotland on how to help people with social anxiety get better at making small talk. Small talk, we often, especially those of us with a little brains between our ears, say things like, I hate small talk, or um, small talk's pointless, or boring, or um, it's so superficial, it's so shallow. People talk about meaningless things when they first meet each other, and I just can't get into it. I just can't actually see what the point of talking about these kinds of superficial uh, topics like Ariana Grande's new single, are and things like that and I just want to talk about the secret purpose of small talk which people that are more heady like you and I watching might sometimes miss. Uh, my late friend, a uh, mentor of mine, Pete Gerlach, identified six reasons why humans communicate. The first is to give and receive information. The second is to cause action or change. So you can ask someone to pass you the salt or to do something for you. Um, the third is to maintain inner or outer respect. Um, the fourth is to vent or seek empathy. The fifth is to avoid pain or discomfort. And the final one is to create excitement or cure boredom. Now I've got a video about the six reasons why we communicate on my YouTube channel. So that is something that you can check out more. And this video after being live streams on Facebook will go on there. But I digress. What I mean to say by telling you the six meaning reasons people communicate is that often the reason why we have difficulty making small talk is we mistake the what we hear as an attempt to give and receive or exchange information. When actually what's going on is the impulse to create um, excitement and dispel boredom and to form a connection with each other. So, so um, that may seem superficial, but as we're going to discover, it's not superficial at all because there's a lot going on. Um, on the surface level, it looks like we're just exchanging information. What do you do? Where do you come from? But on the deeper level, there's a lot more going on with that, which is why um, people are known to select for people, um, for other people with, with good social skills or about the same level of social skills, as good social skills as they can get. It's a highly desirable trait to have good social skills. And this is the first, and if just to, not to give anything away, but this is the first in a series of videos that I'm going to be putting out on improving your social skills. So stay tuned if you want more of those. If you think this is useful, please just smash that share button right now, smash the share button. So, below the surface of the interaction, it's not what's going on in the surface that counts, um, is the primal desire to build connection and comfort and make sure we're safe and make sure we're not awkward to find our place in the pecking order. Who leads then this interaction? Who's taking social cues from who? What do I need to be aware of? What are the needs of the people around me? Um, what do I need to respond to? This can be bewildering for some people because they don't know that this is what's going on. Um, more so, if you think that uh, small talk is something that only superficial people do, for most people, it's um, it's a bridge to a deeper connection. So it might start on the small talk level, but while when they feel safe, when they've got a sense of the other person, and um, they then they're like more likely to open up and be open to deeper kinds of conversations. So this is an actual um, mastering a little skill in so-called superficial social interactions as I've discovered who, so, who was someone that wasn't very good at this kind of thing but has improved a lot and even started to teach um, is that, um, well I can't even remember what I was about to say there um, <laughs> but you get, you, get the, you get the gist of it uh, what I was saying is that it opens up further options for you in the long term so 
what I would like you to bear in mind, if there's this is a journey that you would like to come on with me to improve your social skills, press the share button. This is the first in a series of videos. Next time we're going to talk about developing a certain kind of curiosity. Uh, I just mentioned that most skill-based things aren't really that fun when you first start. Um, when you suck at a computer game or at making stuff or at guitar or anything you try, when you suck at it, really ain't that fun, okay? But see any of these things, playing chess, uh, it sucks to lose over and over and over again. Um, it sucks to be bad at an instrument. So, but the, all of these things, they take on a new dimension as you become skillful f um, at them and all sorts of secrets open up to you once you start getting how into it. So once you, once you lear start to learn how to click with people better, um, all sorts of doors open to you and all sorts of amazing things happen. A conversation becomes a playground and you start to co-create more interesting. All sorts of things can happen. Wild things that can happen that you never thought would happen before. Like uh, you just get into really interesting interactions. Um, and, you know, the better you get, the more you actually notice that the whole time you were looking around trying to get social cues from others, but they're just as nervous and as flibbity flobbity as you are. And you, the, the, more, the more your social skills improve, the more you notice that people are starting to look at you to take social cues from you. You start leading interactions more, which means you can often get more of what you want out of your life, out of your relationships with other people. So, um... Yeah, what happens is if you're not very good at this stuff or you didn't get the quality of social attention you needed at school um, or you just feel socially anxious or maybe um, you might have a lot, um, you might be on the spectrum in terms of Asperger's or autism and that could serve as a disadvantage of you. So what happens is you end up avoiding the kind of situations where you get the experience you need to actually improve and then the more you do that, the more you don't improve, the more you feel the need to avoid those situations. So what we're gonna do in this video series is I'm actually going to give you specific exercises. I'm gonna give you things that you can go out and try in six to 12 conversations, and then you'll feel that you've actually learned something, learned something practical, not something that you've read in a book and gone, oh wow, that sounds really clever and interesting, but something that you've learned from first-hand experience. So um, if this is something, that you would like to pursue. The more hits I get, the better. Uh, please press share, and I will re-upload this to my YouTube channel uh, after after Facebook live streaming it. So um, check me out on YouTube, uh, Anthony Samaroff, and you will be able to follow the rest of the video series. Um, if you'd like, if you'd like to get on my mailing list, you can download my free book, Procrastination Annihilation, from beyourselfandloveit.com forward slash do it. So now that you know what the true purpose of small talk is, half that is half the battle won. Now you know that it's more about creating excitement and the primal states of connection than to actually give and receive information. That's half the battle. Now you need to learn how to do that effectively. So I hope you'll take this journey with me and um, until next time, be yourself. Well, don't just be yourself. Be yourself and love it.